Hello everyone. This is just a short screencast on the topic of setting a random seed. I'd like you to follow along uh, with me in this exercise. Uh, first of all, if you have not done so already, go ahead and clear your global environment by clicking on the little broom here. I've already got mine cleared, but you would click on the broom and say yes, so that your global environment would be empty. And here I am looking in my home directory. I'd like you to open an R script with me and save it to your notes. File. New file. Oops. File. New file. R script. The top option. File. Save as. In your home directory, double click on My Notes. And let's call this, um, how about seed.r. Okay, in this R script, Let's start um, by just trying out a, uh, a simple random function. Uh, you've seen it before, sample. Sample grabs an item from a vector of values. Let's set up a little vector. How about um, a vector called a people? And it shall be the concatenation of Lisa, Anya, and Zach. Okay, so feel free to follow along with me here, typing into your R script, stopping the screencaster every so often, check to uh, check on how you're doing and to uh, catch up. And what we want to do is we want to run this command. And the way to run it is to press Control Enter if you're on Windows or Command Enter if you're on a Mac. You could also press the Run button here and it'll run the line you're on. Command Enter. People gets into your global environment. And now let's uh, sample. Um, from people uh, size equals five. So we're going to sample five things from people. And uh, we're going to need to replace every item that we sample after we sample it. If we don't do that, we'd only be able to sample three. Ready? run this command. Look down in the console and you're going to see five names. Some of them might be the same because every time that you've sampled the name, you put it back into the little vector of items that you're going to sample from. So I got Lisa, Lisa, Zach, Zach, Tanya. Okay. Um, that's all well and good. But now, um, I want to try it again. So just run the command again. You can have your cursor anywhere on the line, even at the beginning of the line, as you see here. Command or Control Enter. Samples again. And you can see it was a different random looking sampling from uh, that vector of people. Every time you get your cursor back up to the command, and run it, you get a different looking random sample of size 5. Okay, um, let's try something different. There's an R command called set.seed. And you give it a number. You can give it any number you like. Um, it should be a whole number, I guess. I'm going to give it 4040. 
And I'm going to run this command. And nothing appears to happen. You can see in the console the command got, got copied and run. But what, um, what has happened here is underneath the hood. You don't see it happening, but uh, R has set a complex number that is used to determine um, how it's programming for uh, random looking functions like sample is going to go. Let's take the same command, sample people size is true, and I'll just put it here underneath and um, I'll run it. And I get Lisa, Zach, Tanya, Lisa, Lisa. Now let me go back, not to just a sample command, but up to the set.c command. Run it. And then run sample. Look at that. Lisa, Zach, Tanya, Lisa, Lisa. Exactly what I got just a moment ago. Well, it's possible when you do something random like this to get the exact same results you got before. Uh, maybe this is a coincidence. Let's go back, set the seed to 4040, and sample. No, this can't be a coincidence. We got exactly the same thing. When you set the random seed, then the random looking result you get from the random function that you use in R, like the sample function here, will not vary. As long as you set the seed, that sample function will give the same random result. Now, I could decide, copy, paste, and I'll, just, I'll go ahead and run all three of these commands. Run. And so I set the seed, and then the first sample command that ran, it sure enough said the same old Lisa, Zach, Tanya, Lisa, Lisa. But the next one was different. Lisa, Tanya, Lisa, Zach, Lisa. And so what's happening is that every time R runs one of these um, random random data generating functions like sample, it actually moves along what its seed is. Its programming determines what the, the seed will be the next time that it's used. But it, but it is totally determined, but it is totally determinate what the seed is at any moment. So if I were to run this, these three lines again, here, I'll do it just by having them selected and then pressing run, just to show you can do it. Then, again, I get the Lisa, Zach, Tanya, Lisa, Lisa, the Lisa, Tanya, Lisa, Lisa, Zach, Lisa, exactly what I had before. So any sequence of random things you do, whether it be one function or two functions or even more functions, as long as you set the seed first, that sequence of random things will do the same things, will, 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 will look the same. The functions may return different results from each other, but the sequence of results, in this case, this, this result here, and then this result here from the second sample, will be the same sequence. Now, if I were to set the seed to something else, like how about one, two, three, four, and run, then Tanya, Tanya, Lisa, Zach, Lisa, something I've never got before, Lisa, Tanya, Tanya, Zach, Tanya, if I try running again, same thing, Tanya, Tanya, Lisa, Zach, Lisa, Lisa, Tanya, Tanya, Zach, Lisa. Let me run it again. Sure enough, Tanya, Tanya, Lisa, Zach, Lisa. Lisa, Tanya, Tanya, Zach, Lisa. So setting the seed 
produces, makes all of the random work you do after setting the seed be the same, no matter how many times you run that random work, as long as you start off by setting the seed. Why would you do such a thing? Well, you always want other people to be able to reproduce your work. If you say, I did this, and use some kind of random algorithm to help you get your results, you talk about your results, you want people to be able to produce the exact results that you said you got. And so in the code for producing those results, you should set a seed before you start using any random functions. This is also really useful in an R Markdown document. If you're going to do random things in an R Markdown document, when you knit up the document, those random functions will be run. If you did not have a seed set, then every time you knit up the document, you would get slightly different random looking results from uh, all those random functions. And if you wanted to talk about them in the R Markdown document, if you wanted to type in text that said, well, see, I got this, and I got this thing. Each time you knit up the document, the random results would change, but your text wouldn't change. So that would be a problem. But you could always get around that problem by setting a seed before you do random work. And so you're going to see the command set.seed more and more often as we go through this course in our markdown documents for that very purpose. See you later.